all power in his hand. There is no longer a sting from death. death. Death no longer has a sting. Amen. The grave can no longer hold us. The grave no longer held our Savior, and I'm so thankful for it today. Today, we're going to be talking about scars, scars, and we're going to be in the book of John. John 11, not 11, 6, it's 11, 16, John 14, 1 through 5, and John 20. 18 through 28. Again, the title of our message today is Scars. If you can go to those scriptures, and if you have your Bibles, uh, you can go ahead and turn to these scriptures as well. So we're going to read um, John eleven sixteen, and it says this, then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. And then John 14, one through five, it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. Or would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And then Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And then let's go to the book of John chapter 20. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Next slide. Now Thomas, again, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach, your hand, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come this morning, God, thankful for another Resurrection Sunday. 
Lord God, we are just so blessed to be here today. And God, I just thank you, God, for everyone who is here. We ask God that you would pour out your anointing on each person, Lord God, that their hearts would be open and ready to hear your word. Lord, we just thank you for this message on scars. And Lord God, we pray, God, that you would heal our scars, God, that we might be able to live a life of godliness, a life, God, that is glorifying to you, a life that is pleasing to you. We thank you, God, because God, we know, God, that many of us have been through some stuff. And Lord God, we just know, God, that we have resurrection power on the inside. Lord God, that you didn't just rise from the dead for no reason so that we cannot live a life that is powerful. And so God, we pray for power in our lives today, God. God, we thank you, God. God, that you rose with all that power. And Lord God, that we can participate in your resurrection today and every day. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Let us all say amen and amen again. Scars. Some of you might know or most of you know that the largest organ we have is skin. Skin is like a fine cloth protecting valuable assets. Imagine a piece of silk. Have you ever worn silk before? And one small tear can make a big difference in how it looks. And it's the same with skin. Any burn or injury or other trauma, such as a surgery, can cause a scar. A scar is a fibrous tissue that develops once skin is compromised. Now a scar may not be bad if it's small or in a location that is easy to conceal. But when it's not, you may wonder sometimes, is there a way to treat this other than hiding it under clothes or covering it up, maybe with makeup? And some of you know that some scars just cannot be covered. The truth is though, that in this life, we're gonna have scars and they may fade over time, but many of them just never completely go away. So we're gonna talk a little bit about scars today and scarring. Like I said, it's a natural part of the healing process after an injury. And thank God that he made us that way, that our skin can heal over. But its appearance and treatment depend on multiple factors. So injuries and the type of injuries do matter. Also, age, your genes matter on how you heal. Your sex or your gender matters, and your ethnicity also matters. But just like the scars we may see on the outside, we have scars on the inside as well. We can cover them up by the way we choose to live our lives. At least we can pretend they're not there for a moment or we can fool people into believing we are someone 
who we are really not. Some of the scars we have on the outside may remind us of the scars we have on the inside. And they're a constant reminder of how we got them in the first place. Now, there are certain types of scars, at least four types that we will kind of refer to today, because I want to give you, give us a picture in our mind of scars. And then we're going to proceed and we're going to talk about Thomas. First, we have kind of keloid scars. These scars are the result of an overly aggressive healing process, and they may extend beyond the original injury. Over time, a keloid scar may hamper how you move. That's how big they can become. They can do surgery to remove them. Somebody is not on mute. Can you check and make sure you're muted? Thank you. Over time, so, so, well, I was at the point where I said surgery uh, can be done to remove the scars or maybe steroid injections and other kinds of treatments. But keloid scars are most common among people with darker skin, with more melanin. But anyone, anyone can keloid. So as I said, they tend to overgrow the boundaries of the original scar. So my question to us today is, how many of you know one thing, one thing that happened to you at any time in your life that took on a life of its own and spilled over into other areas of your life? Maybe daddy issues, or mommy issues, or sibling issues, sister and brother issues that point right back to certain behaviors you have today, because those things have spilled over into other areas of your life. For some of us, we refuse to acknowledge we have these scars and we refuse to get help for them. You know us, many times people of color are in deep denial about our issues and refuse to go and get professional help. We deny the fact that God placed people on this earth who he sent to help us kind of work things out. So we struggle and we struggle and we struggle with the overgrowth. And when someone points out certain behaviors, we get angry with the truth and then we start making everybody miserable. And then there are contracture scars. It's like if your skin has been burned. I'm sure most of us have burns somewhere from an oven or from a pot or handling something, something, um, something hot. You have a contracture scar. These scars tighten the skin, which can also impair the ability for the skin to move freely or for maybe a hand to move freely. Contracture scars may go deeper, affecting muscles and nerves. Some of us may have contracture scars that might only, that might, that may not only be visible from the outside, 
but we are also scarred on the inside. Some of us have those type of scars on the inside, so we cannot stretch and we cannot grow into the people God created us to be. Do any of you have contracture scars on the inside? Do any of you or do any of us have places where we just can't seem to grow, where we just can't seem to stretch out in a way that God wants us to stretch? Hmm. Are any of you stunted in the area of forgiveness? That's a place where we possibly cannot grow because we cannot get past an incident, because we cannot forgive someone or something that happened to us maybe a long time to a long time ago maybe more recent are there situations in your life that no matter how much you try to get past those hurts you stop short of moving on do you tend to swallow the poison of unforgiveness maybe you know someone like that. Maybe you know someone who needs to get past some things in order to forgive. I'm going somewhere with this. And then the third type of scar is a hypertrophic scar. Hypertrophic scar. They're raised and they always look reddened and inflamed. They're similar to keloids, but they don't go beyond the boundary of the injury. Instead, they are raised. When you look at them again, they look inflamed. So my question then to us is, do you have a hypertrophic scar on the inside? Do you have a short fuse? Are you angry about someone or something that happened that was wrong? Are you one of those people who are just angry all the time about anything? Or do you know someone like that who has stuff just piled on top of stuff? It doesn't take much to set them off. No one can tell them that they need help before they're flying off the handle about something. And then pretty soon, people around them become numb to their mess and extreme inflammation. These are some people, fortunately, very few and far between, although it seems like these last couple of weeks, these are some of the people who tend to go off and buy a semi-automatic weapon and decide to blow away innocent people. And then we have, lastly, acne scars. If you've ever had severe acne, you probably have the scars to prove it. They can leave deep pits in the, in the skin. Acne is caused when hair follicles become clogged with oil and dead skin cells and form blackheads and whiteheads. Now, acne can happen at any stage of life, but we see it a lot in teenagers when their hormones are raging and changing. But my question to us today as believers is who or what is clogging up our lives? You got some dead things going on inside? You got some buildup that's clogging up 
your life? Okay, now I understand that one size does not fit all, that all of these scars that I've given you, it doesn't fit all. And a person may have different types of scars at the same time. I could never name all the situations that cause our scars because we are all different. But my point here is that we all have scars. Now I'm going to go back to John 11:16 to Thomas. And I said that he was also known as Didymus. Didymus in the Aramaic language means twin. It means twin. So he had a twin or he looked a lot like somebody else. But we don't have any record of that twin in scripture. So we'll go back to Thomas who says, let us also go. He's talking to the disciples that we may die with him and talking about dying with Jesus. Thomas knew that Jesus was going into Jerusalem and that he had a bounty on his head and he wanted to fight with him and for him. But die how? Die how? Let's go on to John 14, 1 and 5 again. We're not going to read it all, but we're going to read verse 5, where Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can you, how can we know the way? Huh? It's like Thomas was saying to Jesus, Lord, where are we going to meet you? If you're going to go find these rooms for us, where are we going to meet you? What do you think it was like for Thomas to come to the realization that the road Jesus wanted him to follow would not lead to the king's palace in Rome. You see, Thomas thought that the disciples were going to go and take over the government, go and overthrow the king of Rome. And those rooms Jesus talked about, Thomas thought, were places the disciples would occupy in victory after overthrowing the Roman government. He thought he was going where? To the palace. You see, Jesus was not the king the disciples and Thomas expected. The king was not expected to die on the cross. And then let's go to John 20. I'm going somewhere. We're going to wrap this up and you're going to see the connection. Look at verse 20. Where he says, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw him. Why were they overjoyed? Because that door was locked. They thought they would meet the same fate as Jesus. They thought they would be hung on a cross or at least killed somehow for being his followers. But now that Jesus had appeared to them, they thought that they were safe and surrounded by a kind of power that they never experienced before, the kind of power that would just be in a room that would come into a locked room. And then let's, let's move down to verse 22, where it says, and with that, with that peace be with you, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. 
And then out of the blue, kind of weird, he says, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you forgive them, they are not forgiven. So strange because I get a, a, an understanding of why Jesus right here, right now. To talk about forgiveness. But do we guess that there were some bad feelings about Thomas? Thomas, remember, was not there when Jesus said all of this. And then he shows up. He shows up eight days later. And the disciples said to him, we've seen the Lord. But what does Thomas say? Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And then a week later, so there's a lot of time that passed. Thomas and the disciple, Thomas this time was in the house with the disciples. Again, the doors locked. Jesus stood among them, says peace to you. Then he tells Thomas. He doesn't ask Thomas anything, but he tells him, okay, Thomas, here you go. Put your finger here. See my hands. Look at my hands with the nail marks in them. Reach out your hand and put it into my side where my side was pierced. And he tells Thomas to stop doubting and believe. And Thomas says, he finally gets it. My Lord and my God. And Jesus says to Thomas or to them, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen. Talking about all of us who came after. Blessed are we who have not seen and yet have believed. You see, Thomas wanted to see Jesus' scars. But Thomas could not see his own scars. I believe Thomas had scars. He could not see his own scars that caused him not to be present with the rest of the disciples. In John 20, as we read, he demanded to see those scars in Jesus's hands and the piercing in his side before believing. What scars do you think Thomas had? Do you think he had some hypertrophic scars that caused him to be inflamed or angry after he was willing to die with Jesus only to discover that his loyalty would turn into despair? Have you ever been disappointed at the way something turned out, been there, done that. And sometimes we really have to fight to believe and trust God with the outcomes of our lives. Do you believe that Thomas had to fight to believe and trust to come back to the disciples? Have you ever had to fight and believe that the outcome of your life was going to be all right? Has the Lord ever spoken to you? Peace be with you. My peace I give to you because something happened that you really had no control over. Do you think that Thomas was 
disappointed and discouraged that the road in John 14 did not lead to an overthrow of the government, but the road would lead to a relationship with the living Lord of the universe. The road would lead to freedom from sin. Have you ever thought your road was going to lead to riches? Have you ever thought your road was going to lead to uh, a man in your life? Have you ever thought your road was going to lead to something greater than what you expected? But what happened that day when you found out that the road would lead to freedom from sin? Were you disappointed? Or were you overjoyed that those scars that you developed would be healed by a powerful savior. Do you think that Thomas had the scars of contractures, that he was stunted in the area of belief? Do you believe in a God who is able or are you always looking for Jesus to prove himself? Do you make bargains with God like, God, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. Only to find yourself in a worse situation than when you started out. Like Thomas, he was bargaining, wasn't he? Let Jesus show himself to me, and then I'll believe. You think his life had some acne scars? clogged up with his expectations and not God's will? Or maybe Thomas took so long to return to the rest of the disciples because he had a keloid type scar that extended beyond his initial hurt and disappointment of the crucifixion causing him to doubt. Have you ever had a hurt that just extended beyond where it should have extended? In fact, it extended years into your life that it didn't stay contained or where it should have stayed, but it extended so much further. So now my question for us is, are we so different from Thomas? What are your scars? What are our scars? Have you ever been disappointed? Have things ever happened to you so much so that you began to doubt that there even was a God or is a God? Have your expectations ever been lost, forcing you to make decisions that you would not normally make? But do you know today? Do you know that God so loved the world so much that he became scarred to heal our scars of sin? That is John 3, 16. Do you think or have you ever thought that you serve a God who voluntarily died for you and voluntarily died for me? Do you think that I would voluntarily die for you? Would you voluntarily die for me? knowing that I was guilty for something or that you were guilty for something, would you voluntarily die for each other? 
would you put your life on the line for someone else? Listen to this from Romans 5, verse 6. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, and that means when we were still in sin, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will someone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What kind of God would give his life for, for people so scarred because of their sin? I want you to think about what kind of God would give his life for you, would give his life for you and you and you and you, would give his life for the entire world. And God did not just die for our sin. But early one Sunday morning, he got up and shed the shroud of death and rose with resurrection power so that we could become the people we were meant to be. So no matter what our scars are, no matter where they came from, no matter if they came from somebody we were in relationship with, no matter if they came from daddy or no matter if they came from mama, no matter if they came from a sister or a brother who didn't do us right, no matter what our scars are, Jesus died for them and took on our scars in himself so that we could live a life of victory. So what does that mean then? That we can look forward to a new sunrise, that we can look forward to a new day in our lives. He uses our scars to bring us to him. Let him use your scars to bring you to him. Scars and all, how many of you or how many of us are not the same people before we met Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be the same. We shouldn't be the same. We have been redeemed from the scars of sin and we have that resurrection power. We are free to be godly. We have been given this divine nature. We have the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside. We know we're free to be godly because he lives. Because he lives, I can face whatever I need to face. Because he lives, I can face today and I can face tomorrow. Thomas finally got it. He finally got over his scar. God overcame the world by winning people, not governments. One day he will win the government, but that time is not now. This is his time to win people, to win your heart, to win your mind, to win your life so that you can live that life of trust in him. I'll just wind up with this story. And this just happened the other day. I have had a lot going on in the last month. I had a terrible bronchitis. And you can sometimes still hear my hoarseness. And I still have this annoying little cough. And then um, because of the coughing, this, I don't know, it was a virus. Because of the coughing that I had, 
I had broken a blood vessel and broke it so badly that it had to be drained of like a hundred, a hundred cc's. Can you imagine breaking a blood vessel because of coughing? And then during that whole time, like three weeks ago, I had to get two units of blood. I was very short of breath and, you know, just, just so many things just happening, like, oh, it seemed like they just snowballed. And um, my scars, <laughs> my scars were showing and they were getting to me. And I got a call from a friend and she said to me, we were, we were talking and I was just explaining to her some of the things that had happened. And she said, I wish I had just part of a thimble full of your faith. She said, I don't understand you, Marilyn. I don't understand your attitude. I don't understand how you trust God like that. And how you now are just so cheerful and talking to me. And she said, I don't even have anything that I can complain about. But I want some of what you have. And I told her, you know what? God said you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. So God can deal with any scars that you have. And he can smooth out the rough spots. And he can get you over the mountains. He can do whatever it is that you need to be done because he is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or think according to what? His resurrection power and that resurrection power that lives on the inside. That's our message for today. And I hope that you are encouraged. And even though Thomas started off kind of not in a great way, he wound up in a way knowing that Jesus could deal with his scars.